Bernie Sanders went on CNN, and the host Dana Bash asked him an interesting question about Fidel Castro. Joining me to talk about all of this is former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders and author of the new book, Our Revolution. Senator Sanders, thank you so much for joining me. Let me start with Cuba. In President Obama's statement on Fidel Castro's death, he said, quote, We offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people. Is it appropriate for the leader of the free world to offer condolences of a brutal dictator who killed his own people as well as Americans? Well, I think what we have seen in the last number of years is an improved relationship between the United States of America and Cuba. The United States of America has relations with China. We've had relations with brutal dictatorships all over the world. The goal right now is to see that we can improve our relationships with the people of Cuba, uh, to do what we can to improve their economy, uh, and to uh, make sure that the younger generation does better than their uh, older generation. So you're okay with him offering condolences. If you were president, would you have said something similar? Yeah. Yes, I would have. Okay. Um, the reason why this is noteworthy is how mind-numbingly stupid that question was from the host. Because you know what it shows? You have somebody who's just a stenographer for the government. So there's no critical thinking. There's no like, oh, hold on now. That doesn't make any sense. It's just, let me repeat whatever the people in power are saying. So she really framed the question as, is it appropriate for the United States to offer condolences to the family of a brutal dictator? That's what she said. Did she say that when King Abdullah died in Saudi Arabia? No, she didn't. Everybody across the board in the establishment was saying, oh, he's a cautious reformer. That's what Obama wrote, cautious reformer. A partner in the fight against terror, even though elements in his own government funded al-Qaeda. And they implement Sharia, and they treat women as second-class citizens, and they behead people in the public square. And they say that it's a crime to do sorcery and witchcraft. And they say all atheists are terrorists. Let's broaden it out, too, because you want to talk about human rights violators. That's the crux of this question. He's such a human rights violator. Oh my god, how can we, how can we say uh, we feel bad for his family, by the way? It wasn't like, oh, him, he's so great, Fidel. It was like, oh, just saying, hey, the Cuban people, whoever, you know, are going to miss their leader, his family, uh, okay. Like, we'd love to work with you, and we're here with you through this tough time. Whatever. Look at what we keep doing, for example, with Israel. We just gave them $38 billion. They're continuing expansion and apartheid and occupation. They keep taking more and more Palestinian land. And uh, does anybody think for a second, like, oh, hold on, let's ask the president if it's cool that we're arming this regime <laughs> as they continue to violate international law brazenly. No, nobody says that. Nobody says, whoa, 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 really? You have kind words to say to them? Do you know what they're doing right now? Do you understand what they're doing right now? Nobody says that. Why? Because the as far as her thinking goes, it's this. Whoever the government says are good guys are good guys. Whoever the government says are bad guys are bad guys. So the fact that, for example, we partnered up with, I think it was the leader of Uzbekistan, who boiled people alive. Boiled people alive. I'm going to repeat that. Boiled people alive. <laughs> we partnered up with that guy. Is that is that something she, A, knows? Probably not. B, if she did know, would she ask this question? No. She still wouldn't ask this question. Because the government has decided, you know what they called him when he died? A partner in the fight against terror. Sure, he boiled people alive, but we think they were the right people. So it's cool. It's cool. So they would never, they're not objective, and that's what drives me crazy, and you could sense Bernie Sanders, like, anger at the question, because he's like, what a fucking stupid thing to say. What a stupid thing to say. You acted like a normal human when somebody died, and said, hey, I hope the family's okay. Is that really acceptable, given what this person did? And then you wait, just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Wait until Dick Cheney passes away, how they'll talk about him. Is Dana Bash going to ask that question of other... Uh, hey, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, is it really acceptable to offer condolences to Cheney's family? Cheney, a guy who orchestrated the Iraq War, killed hundreds of th thousands of civilians, set up a worldwide torture regime. Now we know, because it's been proven, the, the uh, Senate torture report, we know that they didn't even torture people who were Al-Qaeda. They were totally innocent of any wrongdoing. Are they going to frame it like that? No, because when we commit atrocities, when we do human rights violations, it doesn't count. Why? Because we mean well, or I think we mean well, so I'm just going to say we mean well, and that clears everything. 
Well, you, why you're not going to offer that same uh, way of thinking to other people who are our enemies? You don't think, whether or not you agree with Castro's ideology, you don't think when he overthrew the U.S. propped up fascist dictator Batista in Cuba that he cared about the Cuban people? Again, n no, all the nuance in the world for us and our allies, and all the kind words for us and our allies, and we're never human rights violators. For our enemies, you're the worst human rights violators ever. <laughs> Compare the crimes of Saudi Arabia and Cuba, and then get back to me and tell me if this line of thinking makes sense. Because nobody asked, hey, with King Abdullah, is it really appropriate to, to say good things about him when he dies? When Castro died, they didn't even say appropriate. They said neutral things. Is it really appropriate to say neutral things when an enemy of ours dies? Is it really appropriate? But somebody who's worse, who's our ally, oh, they can do whatever they want. And pff, cautious reformer. He was really fantastic, believe me. So, uh, hey, Dana Bash, stop buying hook, line, and sinker. The shitty, disgusting, irrational, contradictory arguments of people in power. You're a CNN host. You know what your job is? Your job is to hold those people accountable. Your job is not to take the propaganda and and spew it back in the face of maybe one of the only honest politicians in America. <laughs> your job is to take what is true, take what the honest politician is saying, and hold the fucking, hold Obama and the people in the White House and the establishment accountable. But she can't do it because, hey, I fall for government propaganda, which is why she's in the position she's in. There's a reason I'm not hosting one of those shows on CNN. Well, first of all, I wouldn't want to. I probably get better ratings here. <laughs> but also, I would, I would challenge the fucking bullshit narrative. I would bring it up. If you bring up human rights violators and you bring up Israel in the context of that, oh, the establishment would lose their mind. But it's been proven. What do you want me to do? I didn't make them occupy the Palestinians. I didn't make them do apartheid. So, uh, look, man, it just, it's sickening, it's grotesque, and I would have no problem with that question. If they were hard on, on the government and politicians when King Abdullah died, and if they said, Obama, you called him a cautious reformer, that's mental. But they didn't do that. So, it's hypocrisy. Whoever our ally is, is good. Whoever our enemy is, is bad. That's the end of the conversation. And if you deviate from that, well, obviously, you're the crazy one.